All right, so we're going to start the rub process on this 13 gram Wello. Uh, one of the things I noticed here immediately was that crack down there. Um, pretty sure it goes all the way through to the back. Light torch is showing some inclusion, obviously, from these sides here, the bottom left. And then there's a sand layer there. Tons of pop marks, probably craters in there. You can see them all over through this area. And then this side here, um, we're going to dry knock the sand. This is pretty good pots right here. And uh, see what we can get out of it. So when it's a rub, I'll go ahead and uh, follow up. It's got good color in it. Uh, thought I saw some hay shaft in there, but it's mostly rolling fire and a little bit of just a little bit of um, flagstone on the other side on the bottom that I saw. It's kind of a barred color pattern. So I'm not worried about facing right now. We're just going to get all the nasties off of it. And uh, then we'll start getting her wet. I don't want to get any water on here and start having this thing soak up water because it is hydrophane, obviously. It's wellow. And uh, wind up with an expansion crack. be kind of nice if that thing would just separate. I'm not going to go bonking on it or anything. See, there's some good red and yellow in there. Greens, blues, purples. All right, let's get to it. Well, that one was a bust, literally. I got two small rubs down here. Um, there's a lot of fractures in it. They just started coming apart. Um, the mud had gotten so deep into the color area of the stone, you can see those fissures, that they're always secluded by the back shell, the back mud uh, cap on the, on the stone. So that happens, you gotta look out for that. But uh, I'll get a couple of cool little pieces out of this. They're fair size. I'll go ahead and uh, hold on to these for a rainy day. They got great color in them. This is a nice little rub here. Had a lot of green in it. And that's just a 120 grind on that one. So all these can be taken down a little farther. This little guy, uh, you can see all that junk in there. And that was way, way down deep inside. And uh, she started pulling apart on me. That happens. This one here is uh, 94 carat. So I'm actually going to be very careful around that crack there and everywhere else looks pretty good the top looks all right and that can be shaped out but I'm basically going to saw this out this bottom area here with all this mud and crap in it has color showing through but it's a matrix mix so that's not potch mix that's dirt mixed with color. Okay, so here's uh, the cutoff. You can see that color showing through. With Wello, that can be very tricky for a lot of people. Um, it used to get me all the time. Just because there's color showing through that hardened mud there doesn't mean that you can just grind that stuff off and you're going to find color. It's all included. And there's the saw cut. Tons of inclusion. This is the knob that I cut that piece off of and you can still see tons of mud in there. I cut on the back side of the line so I can bring this in on a flat and that line should be pretty close to where most of that stuff ends. You can see it's on the edge right there. I'm not going to edge anything until I get that flat. So I'm going to do that on a 180 
and see what I'm left with. Because all this stuff, I can work with this here. Knock all that stuff off. Just color all through out that. This piece here, I might just go ahead and saw that off. But, yeah, I think I'm going to cut that off. Because I don't trust whatever that is. That looks like a wet pocket in there. There's something trapped inside that stone. Looks like a pocket of crystal. Young opal. Probably highly unstable. So, I'm trying to nick that off. And that's where that crack is too. Look at that. I'm going to follow that crack with the saw and get rid of that. It's worth it. Still left with a pretty darn good piece afterwards. <clears throat> so I'm going to pop that off of there at that crack. That way we don't create any further fracture. I believe that's probably what caused that crack is expansion on that weak seam there. And then um, shed that off and then flatten this bottom. And that'll leave us with our completed rub. And uh, we'll show that. Yep. Trying to get a little bit higher percentage out of this one, but who knows? High dome cab could be in here. So far, so good, but yeah, let's get that crystal out of there. We'll uh, isolate it and cut it off and make our own gem out of that one. All right, more to come. All right, so we got that crystal opal taken off of there. You can see where the water from cutting is absorbed into the uh, stone a little bit. And when I remove this, oh, look at that. There's a big sandy mud pocket right there. I'm going to clean that up and keep it. But the other side, <clears throat> the side I want. Oh boy. So there's the top. That was going to be the bottom. And look at that. Oh, it's falling out of there. It's so gross. Right? Just blah. It's in there. So. It's really hard to see this when you buy the Ethiopian opal. You can have a huge amount of this in here. Now what I could do is see that angle down there? Yeah. All that needs to go. And if I flatten that angle off from this side to this side then I'm left with the knobby. A very nice piece of opal. Now, of course, that's got to get rounded off, and I'm sure I'm going to find some sand pits in there for sure. Um, it doesn't look too bad, not like that. That's freaking nuts. She was soaking up water too, so I got to dig that out real quick. And uh, we'll make that the backside. Make this the top, make that the back. But I'm gonna pick this stuff out of here. I don't want this expanding too quickly, so. Yep, all right. Here we go again. Look at that. Talk about a weight loss program. So there's that ridge. And Mud filled opal fruit bowl? I don't know. <laughs> so, all that's got to go. So, I'm actually going to use a small saw, knock those corners off, knock that corner off. I like to save diamonds on my wheels if I can. Um, I don't like just plunging freaking opals and things like that into my wheels. Yikes, look at that. Almost looks like a like a thunder egg with a geode pocket in it but instead of crystals it's mud 
nasty mud. The good thing is, is uh, that was a sealed pocket. So that's where those cracks came from. That's not a crack there. That's my marker line. But uh, this could have been a whole lot worse. If this, uh, if this stone would have absorbed too much water, it could have burst from the inside out. And that would have caused fractures on the outside. So right now, I've seen this with young opal, um, where you have crystalline opal in this area, and then you've got color bar and crust on the outside. But I haven't quite seen a mud pit that takes up uh, literally 45 carats of a 90 carat stone. So we <laughs> uh, just learned something. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it, so uh, don't be too harsh on me. <laughs> but we're just going to make the best out of it that we can. Uh, I think we'll make a very pretty stone out of this. Uh, hopefully gem quality. Oh boy, look at that. Oh gosh. This gets just nastier by the minute. I think I was planning on taking that off, wasn't I? Where's that ridge at? Yep. Oh boy. Okay. So I'm going to start saw cutting again and uh, get through this stuff. I'm going to spare you uh, after saw cutting and just try to flatten the back of this. So that I have something I can face off of. Oh gosh. Yeah, I'll dig that one out too. Alright, for the third time, here we go yet again. <laughs> So the high points of that ridge there have been knocked down. You can see them drying out now. And uh, that's going to be a flat side there where my finger's pointing. And we're just going to continue working on it. I'm going to weigh this up real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, 27 uh, carat. Yikes. Look at all that. This is the heart of the color. So 94 to 27. That's the official number so far. I'm going to lose 10 right there. Oh. Probably another seven or eight, just capping that thing off. I don't like doing, uh, oh boy, look at that. See that? Uh, follows right where that big mud pit was, too. This is going to be a loss. Oh well, I'm going to start flattening out the back and uh, once I get the back flat and I have color all the way across on the 180, then I'm going to, I'm going to dop it. I'm going to start turning this thing down. Oh boy. Here we go again. Holy bleep, what are we going to do with you? Well, that is going to be a lot of loss. Look at that. So gem torch, torch works really, really good on certain kinds of opal. It does not work on Willow Opal because <laughs> it's already so translucent. It's not the torch's fault, but what happens is you get a refraction and anything in there that has color is going to bounce that light back at you. Um, you're not looking at clear color bars or changes of uh, tone or anything like that. You're not going to see 
the sand pits that are in the heart of the stone. So it doesn't matter. Don't don't let it discourage you. Sometimes it takes a hundred carat or even a forty carat stone to get down to a four or ten carat stone. That is a true beautiful gem opal. Don't let it freak you out. Just take your time. And uh, I'm pretty sure that this one's going to be pretty small, but you just got to do your best. You got to keep at it. The quality of the material, sorry about my wavering hand here. Uh, the quality of material really does matter, but you're going to pay a higher price for that. But these aren't really practice pieces either. Um, I spent a lot of money on these and I think I'll be able to make a little bit above what I spent. So you just never know. Life is like a box of opals. You never know what you're going to get. Or chocolates. I think it was chocolates. But with opals, keep that in mind. Because uh, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you have some real nasty pieces. And you get a 30% gain out of it. Sometimes you have some really nice pieces. And you get 10%. 5%. Sometimes 1%. You just never know until you go in there and start carving around, sanding around, um, staying around that color bar. Well, this is a color bar. The whole damn thing is a color bar. But this is what can happen to it. I'll do my next video on uh, some Australian stuff so you can kind of see the difference. But yeah. We're going to start shaping that down and uh, see what happens. Yeah. We'll get it. It's in there somewhere. We'll find it. should dry out all right. Got good color in it. We'll see how it goes. All right, so that is last stage of pre-polish. Still on the dot. And still has some drying out to do, so It's not uh, absorbing water like crazy. <clears throat> if you get your water balance right, you can get these guys to not go crazy on you. You can still see color in them. And you can still see your, uh, your sanding, your grind marks, your sanding and polishing marks while you're working wet on uh, Ethiopian opal. So there's kind of a trick to it. And you just gotta go a little bit slow. Oh boy. Yep. Removal from the dop stick for backside preparation. Turned out really nice. Um, it's actually not polished. I just ran it up to uh, 2000, so I'm going to soak this a little bit and uh, get off of the dock. Sorry about the shitty video quality, but you get the point. Oh my goodness. That is beautiful. Worth it. Every minute. Alright. 
Next, uh, next we'll follow up on it. Watching. Big thumb. All right, she's off the dop. I can breathe now. Yeah. So it looks a little bit sandy at the bottom. That's perfectly fine. Still got to take care of that, and I'll do that by hand. But the face is looking really good. Just gonna let it go through a slow drying process for about uh, about a week and a half, two weeks probably on this one, and uh, we'll go ahead and complete this video at that time. Whew, man, beautiful! Can't wait to see what it looks like when it's. Uh, Nice and dried out. Hydrophane can be really, really stressful. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're not done yet. More to come.